Hey everyone, this is Grant Thomas from Visas Association uh, coming back to you with one of the most important questions that we always get asked, which is how long does the entire Schengen visa application process take? Uh, so there, <laughs> there are quite a few different ways for me to answer this, uh, but what I'll do is I'll include everything, right? How long does it take to get the documents? How uh, soon can you apply for a Schengen visa? But then also how long does it take the consulate and embassy to evaluate your whole uh, application? So uh, be sure to look at the end of the video where I actually run through the key steps uh, that they take in order to review your application. And it's just some key considerations around your application process uh, for when you're looking to plan for it. So let's jump straight into it. Uh, the first thing that you need to think about and need to understand is that you, or as of uh, February 2020, you're able to apply for a Schengen visa six months before your departure date. Uh, prior to this, it used to be three months before, but what they've done is they've actually extended it out because they found out the pressure that it was putting on people for flights, as well as some other processing pressures that they were receiving for people reviewing it and approving it as soon as humanly possible. So they have extended it, uh, but just know if it is if you depart in six months and one day, and that is when you have your Schengen visa application interview or appointment, uh, they will just turn you away and say, unfortunately, we can't review this because you were too far out. So when you think about that six month prior to you leaving, that is when you can apply. You can be getting your documents ready from nine months out, from 12 months out, it doesn't matter. The things that matter is when you have that appointment is, were they the most recent bank statements? Were they the most recent utilities bills? Were they certified within the last couple of months? So yes, you can get all this stuff ready or at least know where they are months before, but just know they're looking for particular dates around when these things were still valid. So it's no use uh, you getting uh, bank statements 12 months before you leave uh, and then applying six months before, because they're six months outdated. So yes, you can get everything prior to that date, uh, but that six months is when you can have the appointment, right? And so what we usually recommend people to do is plan their travel greater than six months uh, ahead. And it also helps because flights are cheaper, hotels are cheaper, et cetera, because if you're booking last minute, it does become quite expensive. Uh, and then get everything ready from two to four weeks out of your appointment. And so what the process that we recommend people take is book your appointment literally five months or six months before you tr your departure date uh, because what that does is it just locks it down and locks it in. Now, if you've decided to go to the Schengen region within six months, so you're leaving maybe in two months, that's okay, the logic still applies. So once you know you're going to go, go and book the consulate that you're gonna be at the longest. So for example, if you're traveling through France, Spain, and Italy, uh, and you're gonna be in Italy the longest period of time, or that's where the country that you actually land in the Schengen region for, go and book your appointment at the Ital Italian consulate within your city or country first within that six month bracket. So if it's two months, that's fine. If it's six months, that's fine, but just don't make it six months and one. Now, how long does it take you to get your requirements? Now, we've been doing this for quite a while. So for us, it's a, a lot shorter of a period of time, but you're looking at anywhere from about two to six weeks. And the reason that I say that is because there are unknowns in here. So the first one, big unknown, is the availability of your employer to approve your leave, right? So sometimes we've seen people get uh, two week processing times on their request for leave approvals. Uh, other times have been pushed back and renegotiated, etc. Uh, a lot of things are quite quick and easy to get. It's just more of your effort to kind of put it all together. That's like, uh, do you have your latest birth certificate? If you don't, you're going to have to reorder one and that can take up to a month for you to receive it, right? Uh, what about your passport? Is it still going to be valid? If not, you got to reorder one and that can take up to a month to receive it, right? And so it really does depend. Now, if you've got all the documents already and then you can go and get them photocopied and certified, yeah, it's going to take about a week or two. It's completely up to your time. Um, but we always talk about people sort of leaving that two to six week gap in order for them to be uh, sort of giving themselves enough time to go and apply, right? So we'll call it six weeks in worst case scenario. 
Um, but that's really what it's going to take for you to go and get all of your requirements, understand what you need, etc. Uh, what we'll do is I'll link to a video which walks you through the key requirements uh, for your application, as well as ways that you can go and understand exactly what you desperately need for your uh, application probabilities of, of success to significantly increase. So then the second part, which relates uh, specifically to, well, what is the processing time for a consulate? So here's the sequence. You've decided to go travel. Uh, you've then started, you've booked in your appointment with the embassy as such consulate, and you've got all of your documents ready. You walk into the consulate and you go and provide them the documents. How long does it take for them to go and review it and approve it? So typically, this process takes up to 14 days. There have been situations where people have been notified within three days of a successful Schengen visa application, uh, but then there have been situations where it can take up to 60 days, right? So when you apply to a consulate or embassy, they will usually say to you, it will take 30 days. Uh, but again, expect it to be a little bit sooner. It just depends on the volume that they're going because uh, each year there's about 14 million Schengen visa applications and every single year it is increasing, right? So there's a lot of applications that they review consistently and on a regular basis. So really just be kind, look out for them uh, and just understand that they are going through a lot uh, and it's not just your application they're working with. Um, and they will also say to you that it will take up to 30 days. Right, so just make sure that you factor all that in when you're traveling. Uh, this makes it very difficult for people who are looking to travel next week and they make a decision that, hey, I want to travel next week. Uh, and we might do a video on how to uh, sort of do that. But most parts, people are traveling for uh, tourism. And so it's very easy for them to plan well ahead. Now, the reason that it might take up to 60 days is like the number of submitted applicants for that embassy, for example. Uh, what you'll see is if there's like a World Cup soccer match, everybody will want to travel to that country from far and wide between. Uh, and so that just pushes out that application time. Uh, the other thing is if it's quite confusing and difficult for them to review your application because it's not well laid out and it's not logical, et cetera, it will take them a lot longer. Uh, they do look for applications. They can just flick through, validate, and understand completely. So... Uh, if your application is sound and perfect, and we'll link to a video in order for you to understand how to do that, uh, it does make it a little bit easier for them just to go, yep, 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 this person's just traveling, doing this, doing that, and approving it. Uh, and the next one is the sufficiency of the documents, right? And so what we mean by this is, is everything that you're providing looking legitimate? If they have second questions, they escalate it internally. And they say, hey, can you please review this? I'm concerned. And so any time that it gets reviewed by somebody else inside the embassy or the consulate, it does take a little bit longer, right? So again, you want to make sure that everything's certified, everything's logical. And you essentially our process is give them more information in a very logical laid out format so that if they have any questions or second question, anything, it is a little bit easier for them. And so those applications that are quite logical, quite easy for them to follow, people who've got uh, low or no criminal records, people who have traveled to the Schengen visa, uh, Schengen region previously, are all going to see a shorter review and, and approval time um, because, it, again, it's just easy for them to look at it and say, yes, that makes complete sense. So imagine it takes 30 days for the embassy or consulate to review it. It takes us about six weeks, which is give or take about 40, 45 days. Uh, factor in about 65 days in total for your Schengen visa application. About four weeks for yourself to do your work and to go and get all the documents and get your family members and stuff to help whatever is applicable. And then about 30 days for your consulate. Now we hope that it comes through in three weeks, four weeks, but just do know that it could even extend to about 90 days depending. So hopefully this has given you a lot of insight into, it's not just the embassy slash consulate review period you have to think about, it is actually everybody. So if you have any further questions or you would like to know anything else that we can help you out with, uh, comment the question down below uh, because we do these videos quite regularly and we'd love to answer more questions that you have about your Schengen visa application. Now, click this like button if this video has helped you out in your visa application journey uh, because what we have is a lot of generic information out there. And so clicking the like button will help other people like yourself who are struggling to really understand what Schengen visa requirements they're looking for. And be sure to click subscribe as well. Uh, unfortunately, Schengen requirements do change quite regularly. And so that's the best way that we can provide you with an update to actually say, hey, this has changed or this has happened. 
And if it changes midway through your application process, it is still applicable to yourself. And what I've done is I've just linked to two other videos around me that can help you in your Schengen visa application journey as well if this has not provided you with answers that you've been looking for. So once again, thank you very much for jumping on and joining us in this session and I look forward to catching you next time.